What's up, hobby friends? My name is Casey, and welcome to another Miniature Rescue. This week, we'll take a look at a super weird eBay conversion and try and save it. This video is sponsored by CMOGames.com, but more on this amazing sponsor in a little bit. There have always been two sides to tabletop gaming. There's the more moderate approach of going to the hobby shop, picking up a shiny new box of models to fill out a specific unit in your army. You build it, paint it, and play it on the table. Of course, there's a lot more nuance there, but for argument's sake, let's just say it's that simple. On the other side, we see the hobby turn to kit bashing and converting in order to create a model or set of models that fit into a stat block or fill a specific role on the table. In other words, a custom version of something that you could have purchased, but instead used whatever you had laying around to make look enough like the thing in the box to count as that thing. Again, more to it, but I digress. Converting models is fun and a great way to make your minis different, but it can be very difficult to make something look as good as it does in your head. If you don't have the right parts to sell the idea, then you could end up going down the sculpting path and try and make your own. That opens up a whole other box entirely when it comes to hobbying. Personally, I have always found myself somewhere in the middle of those two options, converting models when I think it could improve it or give me something that feels unique to an army that I am building. Now, I want my minis to stand out, but I also bought those minis because I kinda already like the way that they looked, generally. So I'm usually torn on how much converting to do. The other day while I was taking a stroll through eBay, I decided to go a little bit left field and put in a search that might yield a little more interesting results. Warhammer conversions as a search term seems innocuous enough, and on the surface, yeah, it's not all that exciting. But as soon as you move past the standard head and weapon swaps, you start to get into some real weird territory. There are so many insane conversions on eBay that I could legitimately start an entire series dedicated to just rescuing conversions. And while most of them are pretty sensible, mainly additional equipment, head swaps, or third-party parts added, there are some real gems in the bunch. That is where this model comes in. I picked up this Stormcast Knight in Cantor off of eBay for $3.99, which is pretty good. A huge deal simply because it was being sold as a Warhammer 40K librarian conversion. And sure, I can see where this person's coming from. The pose is similar to other 40K librarian models. The purpose they serve is basically the same on the tabletop, and they both generally kind of look like this. So it makes sense. Where it falls a little flat is not in model choice or even what has been changed so far. It's that there isn't quite enough here to really convince me that this model is supposed to be a Warhammer 40k librarian. I did message the seller and ask for any more info on this model to get some insight into exactly what this was actually being used for, and the response was pretty straightforward. The model was being used as a 40k librarian, and that was that. My guess is that the person who did this conversion needed to fill a slot in their army, did a quick conversion and paint job, and put this down on the table. One of the great things about playing tabletop games with your friends is that you can roll up to a game, throw down a model like this, and as long as everyone agrees that the model represents the thing in the game, then you're pretty much good to go. In fact, using proxies, no matter if they match the actual model or not, is a great way to test things out and see if you even want to go out and buy the real thing. This mini served a purpose, and that's really neat, but now that I have it, let's turn the dial up a bit and see what we can do with him using this idea. The plan is to take this guy and make him as much of an actual 40k librarian as I possibly can. We need to do some research to see what types of bits we can incorporate into this model and then get him cleaned up and kit bashed. The first thing we need to do is take a look at what a librarian looks like and see what kind of bits we need to hunt for. Most of these pictures have a few things in common. There are lots of dangly bits coming off these models. The biggest standouts include books and purity seals and lots more purity seals. In some cases, there are chains, scrolls, little relics, and all sorts of things. And in at least one case that I could find, one of those little creepy servitor baby things. Yeah, those are kind of weird. I'll give the model a bath in my ultrasonic cleaner filled with LA's Totally Awesome. And then we can start to see what kinds of things we can do with it. One of the things that drew me to this model, besides the $3.99 price tag, was the sweet axe. On one hand, I really like the way that this one looks, but there are some issues that came with it. 
The main thing is that it doesn't really say librarian to me and the way it was attached doesn't quite fit properly on this model. It was glued onto the end to sell the idea. So I think the best way to approach this would be to find a suitable replacement for the hand that already includes an ax, just to keep things consistent with the original thought behind it. The model already comes with some nice flowing cloth, some little banner, and some little trinkets hanging off of it. So it's definitely on the way to becoming proper. But I think I wanna add more cloth and trinkets and fill this guy up with stuff that just sells that 40K look. I also need to find a backpack. What kind of Space Marine doesn't have a backpack? So I'll keep an eye out for one. Heading to the bits box, I'll grab whatever I can that has extra Space Marine stuff. I also grab a Sisters of Battle tank with a little baby on it. And then I happen to find a sprue of Sisters that actually had a couple of unbuilt ones attached. So if we do end up going down that road, there are a few options. Finally, I found my box of Black Templars, and I happen to have a ton of bits that will probably work really well for this. Separating out all the bits, I came across a few nice things pretty quickly. There are some really good arms in this Black Templar bag that could definitely work to swap out and give a model a more 40k look. I also found a really nice axe in here, like a really nice axe that has some chains on it with the arm in a similar position to the one that he already has. So it would probably be a pretty easy swap and keep the same kind of feel. And hey, a backpack, perfect. Actually sits on his back really well too. The only thing we may have to worry about will be the clearance between the backpack and the shoulder pads. There are a ton of purity seals that I got out of this. Some shoulder pads and a few nice books. An interesting observation here. Look at the shoulder pads. The Stormcast shoulders are just reversed Space Marine shoulder pads. They're just upside down. Never really realized that before. It's interesting and it kind of reinforces the idea that these are definitely Sigmarines. Anyways, I think I've gathered enough to make this guy look really cool. So let's start cutting him up and see what happens. After having stripped the model, I can pretty much tell that there's not much actually going on with this particular conversion. In the pictures on eBay, especially, you know, when looking at not necessarily the best pictures in the world, it looked like, oh, there's there's some cool stuff going on here. Realistically, this is just a Sigmarine with a different axe head on the end of this staff. And that's fine because I got out all of these other bits and I'm just gonna turn it into what it was advertised to be. And that sounds pretty fun. The arm needs to be removed down at the elbow and the shoulder pad can mostly be cut off with a knife. I do need to get out my Dremel and sand down the rest of the shoulder. There was a little bit of an issue. The shoulder pad hangs over the front armor panel quite a bit and there was a little bit of that showing with the new pad on. So I used the Dremel to kind of sculpt some lines in that mostly match the armor. Hopefully I will get covered up in painting. The plan will be to cover up any problem areas with extra bits, and I'm really trying not to make too much of a mess so we don't really have that many issues. Now that everything is put together, I'm going to prime the model black. One of my favorite things about converting models is how it looks when it finally has primer on it. Everything has that unifying coat of paint and makes you look at the model as one single piece instead of everything individually. And I'm really liking the way that this guy is turning out so far. And before you go ahead and write that well actually comment about how Black Templars don't have librarians, I know they don't, I know. But I did find a good way around that and I also don't care. So yes, this is a librarian, but he is specifically a Death Watch librarian. Now there is some precedence for that, and it certainly makes this thematically interesting. But if that somehow still twists you up, then I'll go ahead and say that if I was going to play this guy on the table in a Black Templar's army, then I'd just run him as a chaplain. See, everyone's happy. Still, we are making a librarian, so here we are. Anyways, enough of that. Let's start getting some paint on this guy and really get a feel for what he's going to look like. I'm pretty excited. Before we continue, let me tell you about today's excellent sponsor, CMOGames.com. CMO Games is an epic hobby store that has been selling online for more than 20 years. They focus on Games Workshop products, almost always selling at 15% off, and they carry a wide variety of paints and supplies to get those moons painted. On top of a ton of tabletop games, board games, and TCGs, they carry hobby supplies, 
Pro, Krill, Vallejo, and Scale 75, just to name a few. So you can always find the supplies and paints that you need and get them shipped quickly and at a good price. CML Games also takes care of your pre-orders. So if you need to get in on the newest Games Workshop release, they go live at 12.01 a.m. on the absolute earliest day possible so you don't miss out. Head on over to cmogames.com using the affiliate link in the description below and check out this fantastic store. Using my link won't cost you anything extra, but greatly helps out the channel, so thank you. And thank you CMO Games for sponsoring miniature painting channels like this one. Now let's get back to those minis. I started with the iconic black armor. Black is a difficult color to work with, mostly because you always run the risk of turning the armor into something other than black with highlights. But they still need to be there, so the way I'm going to get around that will be to filter those highlights later on to tone them down and bring the armor together a little bit more. But for now, I'll be using some bluish black and gray to highlight the main parts of the armor. It's going to be bright for a little while, but like I said, we'll knock that down later on. Next up, I need to start filling in some of the other base coats. I start with a yellowish brown for the cloth. This will be a nice base coat for some ivory. It's not too dark that it will make layering up terribly difficult, and the brown will help keep the cloth nice and warm in the shadows. It also plays opposite the cold black armor, so it helps it stand out quite a bit. Using a darker ivory, we can come back over that brown and start to get the first layers on. Layering up with a bright color is still a pain, so remember to go pretty thin and let those layers dry before putting on the next one. Letting those layers dry in between coats means that there will be time to hit other parts of the model. No sense in sitting around watching paint dry. So I grab some of that highlight color for the armor and start doing some edge highlighting. Traditionally, Black Templars have quite a bit of that bluish gray as an edge highlight, and I'm definitely going to use that to start. But again, we will be knocking back a lot of that color when we hit the black armor again, so a lot of this will have to be gone over several times, and eventually I will be using even more color to make it look even more different. But it needs to be done either way, so we might as well take advantage of paint drying to do the work. The first pass over the armor to start changing how it looks will be some watered down orangey brown. Bringing in those colors and shifting the tone of the armor can really bring out a lot more depth in your blacks. Right now we have an extremely cold black and blue and gray. Adding some orangey brown, almost like a wash and a glaze, will tint that color and leave some in the recesses. Just looks really cool and makes the armor a lot more interesting to look at. And it's still black. I'll do several passes of this, glazing from the highlights towards the shadows trying to push back the brightness and leaving the armor looking darker and more matte. For the axe, I'm going to take this and go a step further. The original axe was painted with a bright orange, so I want to keep some of that orange in this updated concept. I'll be using some MIG orange rust to go over the whole thing. It's going to bring in that bright orange, but when it dries, it looks like rust. So the idea will be there, but not overpowering. Next will be some of the metallics. There isn't actually a lot on this model. It's mostly armor and cloth, so I'll just pick out some of the shoulder trim and a few symbols here and there to actually make the metallic. Now, I wasn't sure where I wanted this color to end up, so I started with the darker copper color as a base, just to kind of see what it would look like. Eventually, it's more gold. There are a couple of chains hanging off of this mini too, so a dark silver will take care of those. Also use this to edge highlight and lightly dry brush the axe, just to give it more definition. And then I'll use some of this to do the brightest edges on the armor. I almost completely forgot about the shoulder pad. Using some silly putty, I'll mask off the pad and quickly fill it in with the same colors that were used on the cloth. Pretty quick and easy. The original hand of the model has a big leather glove on it, so that'll need to be taken care of. I'll also paint in the pouches that I attached with the same colors. Starting with the dark brown as a base coat and then following that up with some layers of orangey brown and leaving the dark brown in the recesses. Finally, some pinkish flesh tone mixed into the orangey brown to give that leather an aged, scratchy look. 
All right, so we're closing in on the last few details of this model. And one of the biggest will be his head. He's got an interesting head in that there are metallic pieces that run around the sides and back, as well as a beard that fills in most of his face. I'll start by using a pink flesh tone. Several very thin layers over black will look pretty bad for a while, but the more we do, the better it will look. Again, thin layers and as many as you need until that paint gets to full opacity. Just be patient. Once the head is base coated and dry, I'll use some reddish purple to glaze into the recesses and shadows. The first pass will be mostly an all over coat and then I can concentrate on things like cheeks and brow lines. More thin passes to make it darker and then we can come back in with the initial skin tone to start highlighting and pulling out the details. Finally, I want to bring in some red. A lot of Black Templars have that nice deep red somewhere on them, so I'll paint a few of the cloth bits with the dark red and highlight them up with a bright red to finish off the model. When I picked up this model, I knew I wanted to do something fun with it. Now, I didn't exactly expect to end up with a Black Templar model, or, or Death Watch Librarian, or Chaplain, whatever you want to call it at this point. But you know what? I am pretty happy with the way this guy came out. It's amazing what a single idea can bring to the table when you're going to convert a model. Someone took this Age of Sigmar model, put an axe in his hand and said, you know what, this is a Space Marine Librarian now. And my hope is that someone else was in the room saying, yeah, yeah it is. And they just got to play a game. There aren't a lot of hobbies out there that rely that much on imagination like this one. And the more I convert models and paint, the more that I appreciate that. This guy was definitely a highlight for me, and I'm very glad that I came across it when I did. Hopefully this will give you some ideas of your own, and you can head to your hobby desk and create something that can make some fun memories on the table with friends. Even if it isn't the best thing out there. As long as you know what it's supposed to be, and you can use your imagination to bring it to life, that will always be good enough to have a good game. Thank you for joining me on another miniature rescue. If you liked something about this video, please consider liking, sharing, and subscribing as it really helps out the channel. Once again, I'm Casey, and I will see you in the next video. And of course, here is the completed, converted Space Marine Librarian. Thanks again.